All these parts you see here only cost $800, and it's gonna make an awesome gaming PC that you can build at home. In this video, we're gonna go over the parts and how much I paid for each one. I'm actually gonna show you how to build it, and of course, we're gonna test it in some of the greatest games here in 2024. For the CPU, we're going with the i5-12400F, six cores, 12 threads. It's gonna be a beast for this mid-range gaming session that we're gonna have. But we didn't wanna go with a stock cooler, so we went with ID Cooling's 214 XT. It's only 17 bucks, it's gonna keep it cool, and it's gonna look good. For the motherboard, we chose the Z690M motherboard from ASRock. We got a steal on it for only $99, brand new, unopened, really awesome. If you can't find them in this price range, you could always get like a B660 or a B760, and you know, it'll probably be around this price range or maybe $10 more. It is a DDR4 motherboard, so we picked up 16 gigs of RAM, 3200 megahertz, Oli brand, love this brand, only like 38 bucks. For the SSD, we went with the 500 gigabyte kit from Kingston. I know 500 gigabytes is not a lot here in 2024, but SSD prices are crazy, so to stay in the $800 price range and still get a lot of performance, we went with 500 gigs. If you wanted to upgrade, it would cost you like $25 more to get another terabyte, so, you know, maybe it's worth it, maybe it's not. It's up to you. And for the power supply, we chose the Seago Tip 750 watts. It's a pretty awesome power supply, packs a powerful punch, and it's fully modular. Only $90, absolutely love it. I've used it in a ton of builds, super reliable. For the case, we chose this B-Gears case. It's kind of like a knockoff of the O11 Mini. It's only $50 and it looks pretty awesome. Now, I mean, I think the case looks pretty nice. It has a built-in button to change the RGB as well as a reset button, power switch. But the major drawback to this case that you can see is that it has no fans. So we picked up this three pack of fans. They are ARGB, but you know, they'll do the job. We don't need a whole lot of extra cooling. We just need some airflow in this case. Now as some extra add-ons, we got these cable sleeves here, about 20 bucks, solid black. They're gonna give the build a little bit of a pop and you know, we like the pop. And everybody's favorite part of PC building is the GPU. We went with the RX 6650 XT. We got it on sale for only $245. I know we could have got the 7600 for a little bit more, but that would have went over budget. So 6650 XT it is. All the parts we just went over will be linked down in the description. They are affiliate links. Now let's go build it. So with any PC build, always start with the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM, the cooler if you bought an extra cooler, and the SSD. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbox the motherboard first. It's gonna have some extra stuff that you're gonna need later, especially this little silver thing. Very, very important. Make sure you set that out so you know where it's at. It also is probably gonna have a little bitty tiny screw. You're gonna need that as well. All right, so what I like to do is take the motherboard completely out of the box and I put everything back in there except for the tiny screw and the little metal piece. Don't throw the box away though because you might need those cords later and you know, we're gonna use it as our little building scenario here. So we're gonna set the motherboard on top of the box so that we can actually build everything the way we need to. All right, so the first thing we're gonna install is the CPU and it's gonna go right here. Now again, if you wanna save money, there's a stock cooler in here. It'll be plenty enough for the i5 12400 Elf if you want to use it. But we're just gonna hold on to that for later because we're using a different cooler. All right, so all you're gonna need is the CPU here. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do is take this little lever that's right here and you're gonna wanna completely open it up so that you can see the socket for the CPU. Now, some people always get scared about this part, but you've got nothing to worry about. Now, there's a couple things to help you out. One, there's a little arrow right here that you can see. That arrow can kind of be a guide for you. There's also a little arrow in the bottom corner right here on the CPU. That arrow has to line up with the arrow that's right there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna gently lower this down into the motherboard socket. You are not gonna force anything. It will just kind of gently rock into place right there, and you'll just be able to kind of just barely touch it back and forth, and nothing is going to happen. You're good to go there. All right, then you're gonna gently lower this back down. There will be some resistance here when you lower this back down. This black part is going to pop off, all right? And you're going to scream and push it all the way down. It's very scary, but it's now in place and we're on to the next step. Now typically what I like to do next is install the RAM and this is also a very, very, very important step. Right here you can see there are four RAM slots and if you're going to the right of the CPU, if you're looking at it you know, straight up and down, the top of it is up here where these power cords are gonna go later on, all right? And then these are kinda to the right of it depending on how you're looking at it, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the second one over, we're gonna pull the tab back, okay? Sometimes motherboards will have a second tab that you pull back. This one only has one, and you're also gonna pull it back on the fourth one over. All right, some people call these one and three, some people call them two and four, but you always wanna skip the first one that's closest to the CPU, and then also the last one over there, okay? But there's a little notch right here, and we gotta line it up with that notch. 
Typically, these stickers that come on them are always the ones that face towards the CPU. And you wanna make sure that you line everything up the way that you're supposed to, all right? And when everything's lined up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put pressure on this and you'll hear probably one, possibly two clicks, but you wanna make sure that you hear some clicks and this thing is seated really well, all right? Not the cleanest clicks I've ever made in my life, but those will work. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Make sure everything is completely lined up and then we're gonna snap it in. All right, typically I do a right side, left side, and that kind of uh, gets it all snapped in for me. Now, what you do next is really up to you, but I typically try to do the SSD next. These SSDs are pretty easy to install. There's a side right here with a little bitty notch and another side that has like a semicircle in the middle of it, okay? The notch side right here is gonna kinda go in at a 45 degree angle into the thing that kinda looks like this on your motherboard. I'm gonna try to give you the best shot I can at it with this camera, all right? But this, this little spot right here. And again, we wanna kinda go in at a, oops. We wanna kinda go in at a 45 degree angle. Again, you don't have to force these either. They'll just kinda slide right into place. And you're gonna press it down. And in the little semicircle that's right here, that's where we're, this little tiny screw that we pulled out of the motherboard box, that's where that's gonna go. And don't drop it like I just did, and it's gonna roll all the way across the room. Luckily, I found it with my magnetic screwdriver, so we're okay. All right, then all you're gonna do is screw that into place with that little bitty tiny screw, and you're good to go on that part. Now, for the CPU cooler, it has a pretty good set of instructions, but I'm gonna walk you through it. It's not very difficult at all. Now, this is your back plate. This is gonna go on the back side of your motherboard, and it's got two little tiny, like, adhesive strips that we're gonna peel off here. And since we're using an LGA 1700 socket, because that's what the 12th, 13th, and 14th gen Intel is, we do have to make sure these little gray pieces on the outside are like snapped all the way to the outside. I don't know if you, I think you can see this pretty good right here, but they can kind of go back and forth. We want to make sure they're all as pushed far out to the outside as we can, because we want to line them up with these four holes that are in the back side of our motherboard, and they're not going to line up if we don't have all of that situated. All right, and so that's gonna be there. And now we don't have to worry about it falling out when we flip it over or pick it up or anything like that. We wanna make sure this little curved part, and we're gonna take the four screws and the grooved gray little circles here, and all the gray little circles are gonna go on top of the little standoffs that are coming out from the plate that we just put on the motherboard. All right, now, again, these are gonna go towards the inside of the CPU. And what I like to do is I kinda just like to barely start it on each side. Um, because these little standoffs like to, to fall and run away. So I like to just barely start it and get it all started so that I can just screw it in with a screwdriver when I'm done. And you wanna be very careful to not knock the standoffs off because that is just uber annoying. All right, once you get everything lined up, you just tighten everything down. All right, so for the fan on the CPU cooler, we want it to kind of set this way. So we've got to set that up on the actual cooling block itself, all right? So you can kind of just set it like, you know, you're gonna set it onto the CPU block, all right? Then there's these tiny like wirey, wirey, I can't talk, looking things that we're gonna like put on the fan to make it work, all right? So the fan cords as well, you're gonna have to plug these fan cords up. So <clears throat> what I like to do is I want the fan cords to kind of sit, <clears throat> I like for the fan cords to kind of sit towards the top of the motherboard because this is where your, your fan stuff is gonna be plugged up at. All right, so what I like to do is I try to like to like run this cord, these cords, so that I can reach both of these without exposing too much of the wire because um, I want it to look nice, you know? All right, so I'm probably gonna let the extra slack hang off over here so that we can have it. So I kind of rolled it from the top over to the side and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this wiry piece and you're gonna slide it in to the front hole. That's where the fan logo is at, all right? Well, if I don't screw it up, all right. This is gonna be in the front hole there and we're gonna put it in the front hole there, all right? And then it's kind of got some play in it on that side. This is why you wanna run your cord first because we're gonna do the same thing on this side and it's gonna kind of keep our fan cord pulled down, all right? So then what you're gonna do kind of on the side is you're gonna pull this all the way to that first groove, all right? And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You're gonna pull our little tab that we have right here. We're gonna pull it all the way to where it kind of snaps in, and it's on the cooler like that on both sides, all right? This is the most important part of you doing your cooler. Please make sure you pull this off, otherwise your CPU is gonna suffocate and die.
kind of. All right, so now that we got the fan on and we got this sticker pulled off, we're gonna take this little bitty silver package out here. It's the next important part. You gotta put this on first. This is your thermal paste, all right? You need thermal paste for your CPU to work properly. And what I like to do is just take a big old glob of it Put it right in the middle. So this is a good teaching point here. If you don't open that little thermal paste packet really nice and cleanly to be able to put just one giant glob right there in the middle, you're gonna mess it up and you're gonna have to go buy a tube of this thermal paste. I'll have it linked down in the description if you need it. It's only $7, but you don't wanna use it unless you have to. Already messed up the, the thing that come with, so we're gonna have to use this. And some people, like some people put a dot, some people put an X, um, you know, this CPU, you probably don't need an X, but you know we'll put an X on there just to be safe. But as long as you put like a drop right in the middle, you should be good, especially with that little packet, no hotter than this CPU gets. All right, again, once we're done with that, you got the thermal paste on there, you got the sticker pulled off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line up these screws with the two screws, focus camera. All right, we're gonna line up those two screws with the two screws right here. Again, fan facing the RAM, all right, and then what you want to do, all right, I'm gonna to try to get so we can see, oh my lantern. All right, so you can't get to the screws with the fan on, so we're gonna to have to take, we're gonna have to take the fan off and do the screws first, all right? All right, that's the screw we're talking about, right there, where the screwdriver's at, okay? This little screw right here, all right? You wanna get it started on one side, then go to the other side, oh. Then go to the other side and do the same exact thing, alternate back and forth, like twice, and then you can get both sides really tight and snug. Do not over tighten. All right, so once you have that done, you're ready to kind of clear everything off your area. Then at the end, you want to put your fan back on the motherboard like we talked about earlier. Now that you have your motherboard set up, you got the fan back on the CPU cooler, everything's lined up, ready to go. Now you want to kind of clean your area up, put everything back in its boxes in case you ever need any of the spare parts, and let's get our case up and ready so that we can build the PC inside the case now. Okay, so for this PC case, there are four screws attached here that we want to take the glass off. And sometimes they're pretty snug. I don't know why they, you know, go so crazy with them. So you may need a screwdriver to take them all off. All right, all right. And so when I take the glass side panels off on my, anytime I'm building a PC case, all right, we want to take the glass side panel off. Then we want to put it back in the original box so that it doesn't get broken. Then what I like to do is take the screws and put them back in the holes where they were gonna go original, like where they go with the glass, so that you don't lose them, all right? I've lost so many screws early on in my PC building journey because I didn't do this, all right? And so I just started putting the screws right back in their holes where they're supposed to go, and I quit losing these case screws because finding a match for them on the internet is super annoying. So just put them back in their original holes and you're good on that, okay? You're also gonna wanna remove the back plate. It also has some two screws here on the top for the back plate. You wanna go ahead and remove those as well. These kind of stay in on this case, so then you just slide the back plate out. Again, I put it back in the cardboard box so I don't lose it. You'll have the back plate off your computer as well as the front side of the glass, all right? All right, okay. So for this motherboard, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna check these standoffs here to make sure they line up with our motherboard, okay? And while we're doing that, this metal piece that I told you that we're going to, uh, we took out of our motherboard box, we're gonna take that bad boy, all right? And we're gonna put it inside the case right here where this horizontal slot is, okay? And if you look at your motherboard, okay? When you've got the top of your motherboard, all right? You got the top of your motherboard up here, okay? and you flip that over and you look, you've got all these things right here. See these three holes? They're at the bottom. So the three holes on this thing should be at the bottom, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go put it on the inside of the case to where it pops into place right here, okay? And you're gonna pop it kind of like in all four of the corners, okay? All right, just snap it in real good. You gotta do that before you put the motherboard in, otherwise it's a nightmare. All right, now we can kind of check to make sure our screws are lined up. So right now, it looks like this is set up correctly, but we just wanna kinda double check. So we're gonna line all these holes up inside. Okay, you kinda wanna pull it into the side where we just put in that metal piece. All right, and we're gonna line up all of our holes, okay? So if you see somewhere 
that you can't see the little gold screws through. All right. You also want to check to make sure none of your ports over here on the side that we just talked about, you want to make sure none of them are out of touch there. And you want to make sure there's a little gold circle standoff inside each little hole of your motherboard. So like your motherboard, all right. So like your motherboard has these holes, all right. And they've got to line up with these little gold standoffs that are inside your case. Okay, so you want to make sure all those are lined up, all the holes on your motherboard lined up with all those things. And we're going to slide that into place here. And we're going to make sure everything is lined up good, which can be a pain sometimes, especially when you use cheaper, cheaper cases and cheaper motherboards. It can be rather annoying. All right, so inside your case, there's going to be this tiny bag of screws. All right, and what you're going to want to find in this tiny bag of screws People call them fine tipped screws. I think you can kind of see the top of it right there. That's the screw you want to use for your motherboard. So you want to find all of those in that bag and we're going to put them all in here in all of those places that line up the motherboard nice and easy for us. Another pro tip is probably to get a magnetic screwdriver so that it makes this much, much easier. Now with this particular case, there is one screw hole that does not have a screw. But that's okay because there's nothing touching it. Like there's no metal touching it. It's just air. There's nothing on the case there. So don't freak out about that. If you were to try to copy this build completely, that is okay. All right. Also, don't try to force these motherboard screws in. Uh, they'll go in pretty easy. If you have to try to force it, you probably just have something not lined up correctly. So unscrew it and try to do it again. All right. So now we got all that situated and it's in there. Um, and probably before you put it in there, you could have plugged up these cords for the, <clears throat> for the CPU fan. So hopefully I can get you a better look here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the CPU fan here and the RGB fan, and we're going to make sure that we plug them into the right spots. All right, so the RGB is gonna go, there's like three pins right here. Again, three holes, three holes. We're gonna line those up and we're gonna see how this will do, all right? You wanna line them up nice and easy, all right? And it should just slide right on if you get them lined up correctly. All right, so that's for your RGB, and this is for your fan. And you wanna find the one on your thing that says CPU Fan 1. So that's the one on the right side right there. If you're looking at it the way we are here on the screen, all right, Let's see if I can find you an angle. All right, right there, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna plug it up just like that. And our CPU fan stuff's plugged up and you know, this is not the best motherboard placement I've ever seen. So our cords are just gonna kinda be there, but there's nothing really we can do about that. All right, so that's plugged up. So the next thing we're gonna do if you're copying this PC build is install the fans into this case before we put anything else in there. And you could do this before the motherboard if you really wanted to. Now, the fans should come with screws. Um, if they don't, then um, you're probably out of luck. You just have to order some fan screws, I guess. So typically what I like to do is I like to install all the fans first, and then I'll worry about the wires and such. Okay, so the front of the fan where the sticker's at, that's gonna be where the air goes into the fan, and it comes out on the other side. All right, so we need some air to come into this case by the way that it's going. So we're actually gonna get air to come in the back side of the case, where you can see where my hand is back here in the back. It's gonna come in through here, come through this fan, and we'll put another fan here, and it's gonna blow out that way. So it'll come in the back, go this way, and blow out. That's kind of how we're gonna let it run. So in order to do that though, we are gonna have to turn the fan around like this, which can be kind of an eyesore. So if you wanted to, you know, you could try to take that sticker off, um, but we're just gonna leave it like that because that's our only option to stay in this price point. Now, we took the back panel off at the beginning of the video back here, all right, so that we can put the fan in like so back here in the back. And we're gonna use the fan screws. We're gonna walk around to the back side of the case and put the fan screws into the four holes that you see. One is here where my thumb's at. The other one is in the upper right up here at the back. All right, and they have two on the other side as well. But screw them in on the other side because that's where the metal plate is at. I would probably screw the first fan in on the bottom first. That'd probably be a little bit easier. All right, another pro tip is I want my cords. I kind of let the cords for my fans come through that little hole right there in the back of the case. So in order to make that easier to run the cords in the back, you want to kind of put your fan cord here on the bottom corner. So you want to position it like that. It might be easier to do that without the motherboard in here. That's just totally up to you. It's really not that bad, but I'm using one hand right now. All right, so then we're going to set that up. I'm going to do the same thing with the other fan. Again, kind of want the cords at the bottom so that you can put them through that little chamber 
in the back there. All right, so once you have the fans kind of in the position that we need them to be in, then you're gonna put the screws in. And what I kind of like to do is kind of just get one screw in each of the fans to start with, and then I can kind of position them, you know, where I want them. One thing to be careful about this PC case is the metal in the back is really flimsy, so don't go crazy tightening the screws, or you could mess it up a little bit and bend it, and then the screw won't hold the fan. So just be careful of that. It's not a problem as long as you don't go crazy over tightening it. Then we also have the one PC fan that we're gonna put in the back of the case, like on this wall right here. And we want it with this part facing towards the CPU cooler. And again, we want the cord to kind of be in the upper part because we're gonna run it through the top of the case back to the back side. Again, once you get one of them kind of started, all you gotta do is uh, kind of let it hang there for a second. And then it's a little bit easier to get the rest of them in. All right, so we got the fans installed. I'll probably put the two back here and move them up a little higher so it covers those wires up there because down at the bottom it won't be as bad. And you got the fan in the back here. And you know, that kind of covers all of our angles that we've got going on. All right, so now let's talk about like plugging the fans up um, so that we can keep all those situated. I like to go ahead and plug the fans up so they're out of my way when I plug up everything else. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is like take all these little twist ties off so you got room to work with. Also, this case has this little uh, hard drive SSD tray. Most people don't use those anymore, but if you want it, that's fine, but I would advise taking it out. There's two screws here, two screws here, That'll make it a little easier for you to do your cables. So your fans have two plugins. It has this fan here that is like for the power and this little three pin part that is for the RGB, similar to the CPU cooler that we had earlier. So we're gonna kind of work from the top down. We're gonna start with our, two, our fan that was in the upper part, okay? And we're gonna try to keep these going like down through here and around so that we can, you know, keep our cable management going. All right, so the first things first is this part, which is the CPU fan, we're gonna take the next closest fan, all right, and we're gonna find the end that looks like this. We're gonna plug those two together to chain those fans so that we only have to plug it into one header, okay? So it'll kind of look like that when you've got it, okay? Then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take, gonna take that same one, and the one we just plugged up, all right, and we're gonna take it and plug it into the third fan, again, that looks like this, all right? So it looks like this right here, and we're gonna snap it into place, all right? And then this cord here is gonna go right up under the motherboard, okay? Let's see if we can see that, I have to take it off. All right, and that cord we just plugged in is gonna go under this little hole right here, and that is going to go onto the motherboard, all right? So this little cord that just come out, we're going to find one of these that says fan. And you should be able to see that that one right there says fan, it's like right, right there, that one says fan. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cord, all right, with these little prongs here facing down, we're gonna plug it right in to there, perfect. And then we're gonna tuck that cord back as far as we can, back in the back, so that not very much of it sticks out. All right, so now we're gonna repeat the same exact process, but we're gonna do it with the cord that looks like this. It's got the three prong. All right, so for the RGB, <clears throat> you kind of got to work backward. You got to start with the RGB cord at the very bottom because that's the one that's going to go into your motherboard. And you want to take this little cover off, right? You want to take this little cover off so that these prongs are exposed and you want to plug it into the next closest fan, making sure that everything lines up in its holes. And there's two little arrows on this that you can see. You got to make sure those are lined up and then you just snap them together. Then you wanna take the fan from the top, that's up there by the top of the case, and find its end that has the three holes like this. We're gonna plug it into the other one that is exposed. Again, making sure those arrows are lined up nicely. All right, all right, so we got all these cords. I know it looks so super fantastic, all right? But then we're gonna find the one that's at the bottom of the case, all right? The one that's at the bottom of the case, and we're gonna do the same thing we did with the fan. It's gonna go up under the motherboard and come out the other side. All right, and so what we're looking for here is the one that has three pins, all right, and is gray, and it should say RGB. Depends on what your motherboard says, but it should have a different color. But it's got three pins. It's that little gray outlined right there. Just as we did with the CPU cooler, we're gonna line those holes up, we're gonna plug it in. And anytime after you plug something in, just push the cords back to the back so it makes it look a little nicer. And, whoo, all right, so now we have everything plugged in 
to our motherboard as far as our fans go. Okay, so now that we got the fans plugged up, we're going to talk about all these other cords that are connected to the case because we want to plug those up before we put our power supply in just because it's a little bit easier. All right, so the first cord that we're going to look at is the HD audio. HD audio is going to go in the bottom right of the case over here, and it's going to plug into the bottom left of the motherboard where it says HD audio. All right, the next cord with this case is going to be the USB 3.0 header, okay? And we're going to kind of put it through the side here because this plug-in is on the side. All right, it's going to go right through there. And it's going to go into this place on the motherboard. There's a little notch right there that's going to go into this right here. And there is also a little notch in this thing. And those just have to line up just right. And you snap it in. Again, after you plug these things up, I like to push the excess cord as far back as I can. Now the last part seems the most overwhelming is you got all these little bitty tiny cables and they can be overwhelming, but they're not that bad, okay? Now some motherboards have, like you can see here, it says LED in the upper left, reset, um, HD plus, power, all of that stuff. Some of them give you like a key here, but typically what you have to deal with is the LEDs go at the top two on the upper left, the power switch go on the top two on the right, and then you have HDD on the bottom two and reset switch on the, like the two, the, well, I guess it's the third and the fourth pin. But as far as back here, I like to run them under the right side, the right side, or yeah, the left side, sorry, the left side of the motherboard because that's exactly where the power connectors are. This is a tangled mess. So try to like, I try to get them all to where they're unrestricted. Try to get all the cords unrestricted from anything else and then run them up under there. All right, I like to do the bottoms first. So I start with the reset switch. So I'm gonna go over here and find my reset. Nope, nope, reset. All right, and it's gonna go, all right, on the bottom. Fiddle. All right, so on the bottom, right in there. All right, then the HDD. All right, that goes on the bottom to the left of the reset. All right, so it goes like that. And you're gonna have that one pin on the bottom right that's just kind of not being used. Then the power LED. Plus, minus, those are a little bit annoying, but I think typically the plus goes on the right and the minus on the left. All right, and then the last thing is the power switch. It goes on the upper right to little pins. All right, so that's kind of what you should have for power LED and power switch. All right, again, we're gonna tuck those cords back under the motherboard so that they're away. Okay, all right, now, this case has an extra little thing that's LED switch. This is if you have some sort of, you know, controller uh, for your lights in the back. We should be able to control it with motherboard software, so we're not actually going to use this. Um, but if you needed to, you would have it. All right. All right, so, all right, so what I like to do though, when I do, is, so the 24 pin, all right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 24 pin cord and we're gonna plug it up into there. Because we are using a modular power supply, our cords will be separate. So there's a little tab on it and there's a tab on the outside edge. What we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of wrap this around to the backs, or maybe it'd be better to come in front. I don't know. All right, so since we're using a modular power supply, our cords are gonna be separate. So we're gonna start by plugging in our 24 pin. That's the bigger one that looks like this. We're gonna plug it in right here on the motherboard. If I can get it to focus on that for me, right there on the motherboard. All right, so there's a little tab on it and there's a little tab on the outside edge of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of wrap this around to the back side, or maybe it'd be better to come in the front, I don't know. So the unfortunate problem we're running into right now is we have to undo this fan so that the 24 pin will go in here. 
and this is just the truth behind PC building. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, we're going to have to take this whole fan out because it will not. It is going to cause us problems putting in the 24 pin. Now, I don't have to unplug everything, but I just got to take this fan out here so that we can get the 24 pin into the back side of the case like so. Okay. And there shouldn't be anything else that goes right through here because um, I should be able to put the, the GPU thing underneath here. All right, so I'm gonna get this completely plugged in first. So I got that plugged in. Now again, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. There's just hiccups you run into. So I had to actually remove the fan. I had to remove this top fan in order to make room for me to, to slide the, uh, the cable behind the motherboard there so that we could, you know, get it back here so we could plug it up here in a minute. Super annoying, man. Super annoying. All right, so now we're going to use the CPU cable. Had to switch to the cell phone because the other fancy camera would not focus on anything. And I want you guys to see this. All right, so there's two uh, sets of plugs here. Uh, with the lower end GPU, unless you're doing any overclocking or anything, like where you don't need the other pins. So we're just going to plug this one up and we're going to put the back of this through the back side of the case. We're going to flip this around and plug it up right there. All right, so when we're done, it's going to kind of look like that. Um, and so we got those two. Those are the most important ones that we need to run to the back. And then the last one is the graphics card cable that is here. Now, depending on how your case is, like this case, there's not enough room over here. We know how much of a pain that was because of the 24 pin we had to run behind. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this underneath over here. All right, so it's going to be underneath so that when we get ready to plug in the GPU here in a minute, we'll just, the cord will be right there for us to use. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda look at what we need. So we're gonna need one CPU cable, one 24 pin, and one graphics card cable, all right? So that's what we're gonna get out of our power supply box so that we can kinda get all of this ready to plug up. All right, so what we got here is a PCIe cable, a CPU cable, and our 24 pin. Those are the only three we need for this build because we're not using any SATA or Molex or anything like that. And, but hold on to your extra cords, don't throw them away because you may need them for future upgrades later on down the line. What we're gonna do is we're going to unwrap these cables and we're gonna plug them into their spots back here where they're supposed to go. And then we're gonna add them to our cable extensions. It doesn't really matter what order you do this in, just make sure you know that there's only gonna go in one way. So if it won't fit into this connector, don't force it. It's probably the one that goes on this end. All right. And you can also tell by the thickness of the little tab there, the ones that go into the power supply have a much like smaller tab compared to the ones that go into the motherboard or the graphics card themselves. All right. So we plug that one into the power connector for the graphics card. All right. Then we get the CPU one again, make sure that you use the thicker ones to go into the cable extensions. All right, and they'll have little notches on them that line up like you're supposed to. Again, don't force, they'll go in there pretty easily. All right, so once we have the 24 pin, the CPU and the graphics card all plugged up together like we're supposed to, then we can plug them into the power supply. All right, so the 24 pin, I bet you can't guess which one it goes into. It goes into this big one here, which is more than 24 pins. Again, make sure the tabs line up there. All right, plug the CPU one into the C one of the CPU ports there. Doesn't matter which one it goes in, make sure it's plugged in there. And lastly, PCIe into one of the PCIe's. All right, now we got those plugged in. Now what we can do is put our power supply into the computer itself, all right? So we kind of want to finagle these cords, but just so you know, the fan needs to face outward. If you have a different case where the like this power supply is on the bottom, then the fan needs to face the bottom because it's going to pull air in to cool off the power supply. So we want ours out so it can bring air inside. All right, so we're going to push it in like this, and there's four holes there to screw in. We'll talk about the screws in just a second. All right, so once we kind of get all the cords out of the way to where we can get our power supply in this little socket, um, these are the screws you need right here. Uh, these are like a hex head kind of deal. We want to put those lined up into the four holes that are on the power supply, and they should line up perfectly so you can see exactly where they go. And there's four of them. All right, so remember what I told you earlier, cable management is much harder in cheaper cases. And it's even harder uh, when you use cable extensions. So again, our goal, we got a little bit of room up here at the top, which we can kind of bundle these together um, and use up here. We also have some space here. So what we're gonna do is like, I mean, if you don't care, just kind of cram it in there. 
Should be fine. Just don't, you know, let it have too much pressure. So we're going to move this around see what we can do. We'll show you at the end. All right, so now we're going to plug in the graphics card. All right, so we want to make sure on this graphics card that this slot here lines up with the slot right there, okay? And to be safe on this situation, okay, there is a little tab right here on this gray slot. You want to make sure that it is pushed down so that you're ready to go. There's also these two little metal slots right here. They have a thin piece of metal that you have to bend and pop out of there. It's very easy to do. All you got to do is just bend them, wiggle it back and forth. Okay, kind of looks like this. Wiggle it back and forth and it will pop right out. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to slide this graphics card into place right here. Directly, again, lining up this spot with the slot right there. All right, once you get it lined everything up, you're going to push it in. It's going to have a nice, smooth click. All right, pretty decent click. Okay, then once you have that situated, all right, we can plug up our power cord now. Again, this is why we didn't cable management too much earlier is so that we could plug this up first. All right, after you plug it up, you can kind of push the cord back under so that it's ready to go. All right, then the last thing that we need to do here is we have a couple of screws that we need to put in. All right, and then we're gonna use the same screws that we used for the power supply and we're gonna line them up right here with these holes on the side so that our GPU doesn't really sag at all. So you may have to lift the GPU up just a little bit to get this screw to go into place. All right, so now we got the two screws right there and everything is pretty much situated now. I think that looks pretty solid. All right, and here's a final look at the best cable management job that I could do um, just to kind of get everything like as neat as possible. Um, and tucked away from all these fans um, and everything kind of in the middle here to hide as many cords as possible from the front side of the PC. All right, let's clean all this crap off, plug up the PC and see if it turns on. All right, so now it's time for a moment of truth. One thing on the power supply is that there is a little, I don't know if I can get it to focus. Focus. All right, there's a little switch there with like a zero and a one. All right, you wanna make sure it's on the one side. Okay, and if there's any, Lights on the motherboard, that would turn those on. All right, and here's our moment of truth, okay? We have life, let's see if we have, all right, we have a boot, let's go. Very, very nice, it turns on. The only thing that we have an issue with right now is our fans, our RGB fans are not on. So we'll have to take a look at that in just a second. But everything else looks pretty good to go, all right? Everything else is on, everything else is good, so we're gonna, Go see if we can figure out why these fans are not turning on and we'll be right back. Okay, so I just accidentally unplugged this cord down here and that's why the lights weren't on. But now we have lights and it looks pretty awesome. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. We're gonna install Windows. So to install Windows, you're gonna need at least an eight gigabyte flash drive and we're gonna plug it up to our computer. You will also need a computer that can actually run Windows. Maybe it's a laptop, a school laptop, go to the public library if they'll let you download stuff there, but you need something that already has Windows. Then we're gonna pull up our files and we're gonna to go to the flash drive that we just put in there. Mine's named Sam Data there. So what we're gonna do is rename this as Windows so that I know what it is and don't accidentally delete something later on. All right, then we're gonna right click and we're gonna format, okay? I was FAT32 NTFS, I've used both of those with no issues. Some people argue over that on the internet, but I don't think it's a big deal. So we're gonna click start and it's gonna erase everything. So if you don't want anything erased, use a different flash drive. Do, 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 do. Once that's done, we want to go to a web browser and find Windows Installation Media. Just click it, type it in the search bar. It'll be one of the first thing that pops up and you're going to look for Create an Installation Media for Windows. It's going to be on Microsoft.com and you can choose Windows 10 or Windows 11. Personally, I like to use Windows 10 and then upgrade to Windows 11 for free if your hardware allows it. What we're going to do is we're going to click Download Now, Save As and just put it, you know, somewhere. Downloads is fine. And then we're going to open the media creation tool. And it's going to take a little while to set up this whole process. So, you know, go make you a snack, a sandwich, chill, watch one of my other YouTube videos. That would be a great idea. All right. And then, so then in a few minutes, it'll be done with this process. And we'll get to create an installation USB flash drive. That's what we want to do. I'm going to click next, uh, next USB flash drive. All right, and then this is why we named our drive because we don't want to accidentally delete something, you know? 
we want to make sure that we click the one that we labeled window click next and this is the process that takes the longest um so process is going to Take a little while. So after you let it run to 100, it'll say your USB flash drive is ready and you'll just click finish. Then you're ready to put it in your PC. Okay, so once we have the flash drive ready to go, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plug it into our PC, preferably into the motherboard, it works better sometimes. And then we're gonna power it on. You should get a power on screen straight into the Windows menu. But if you don't, it could boot into the BIOS and I'll show you what to do there. If your computer doesn't boot into Windows and you're seeing a screen that looks kind of like this, then you're gonna have to change your boot order. This BIOS is pretty easy. It's got a shortcut for it right over here. But if your BIOS doesn't have anything like this, then you're gonna have to go to advanced mode, find it somewhere, click on it. All right, and in advanced mode, we're gonna go to boot. There should be an option for boot and boot priorities. This is what you're gonna look at. And you're gonna to wanna to change your UEFI general disk. It'll say scan disk, something like that. That just basically means that you want it to boot from the USB flash drive, all right? So you wanna make sure that that is number one in your boot options. After you fix this and the USB stick is on top, just reboot your computer and it should boot into the correct screen. Once you're on this screen though, and you're finally ready to go, then you're gonna click next here, install now, and it's gonna start your setup. All right, so you don't need a product key of Windows. Check the ad at the beginning of the video. Um, but if you already have that, then you can go ahead and type it in here. If not, select I don't have a product key. I always do Windows 10 Pro, so click that one there. Then we're gonna click next, accept the license and terms, custom install Windows. Now, I've already installed Windows on this PC, so you won't have all these settings. You will just have drive zero unallocated. That's what it'll say. There'll be only one option there. You click that, you click next, let it run through the installation process and Windows will be on your computer. So after you have Windows installed, there are like two or three other things that I wanna show you how to do because they are super important and they will drastically affect your performance or your ability to even run games at all. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the computer and while it's booting up, we're going to spam that delete button here on our PC so that we can get into that BIOS screen. And then I just I just spam, spam it, baby. All right, once you're in the screen, there is one setting that you want to change. Now, if you've already had to do this because of Windows, then you're familiar with this a little bit, but what we're gonna find is we're gonna find XMP profile. It should be one of the first things up here when you boot into BIOS, but your RAM speeds are not gonna be running correctly, all right? And if you bought a good pack of RAM, which you should have if you follow in this build guide, um, you have an XMP profile right here, all right? And you're just gonna click on that. It's gonna have an auto. You don't wanna select auto. You wanna be on XMP profile one. That's the one I always use. That will give you better performance. Once you're done with that, click F10 or save and exit and it should boot you back into Windows. The next thing we wanna do is pull up the uh, web browser and find AMD Adrenaline Software. That's what you want. That's the easiest thing to Google so that you get brought to the correct page. All right, and we're gonna download the software and it's gonna bring us to Windows 10 11 drivers. We're gonna download the drivers. All right, once that's done, we're gonna open it up, let it run, install, and it's gonna do its thing. Once it's done doing its thing, you're just gonna click next. All right, next again, and install. Once you do that, it's gonna run through a process. The screen will go black a few times. Don't freak out about that. It'll be fine, don't touch it, it'll mess it up. Once it's done, then it may ask you to reboot the computer. If you need to reboot the computer, if not, then you're good to play games. And just as promised at the beginning of the video, we are gonna benchmark it in some of the best games of 2024. First up, we tried Starfield. Starfield at 1440p, we tried it on the medium preset settings with no upscaling, we turned that off, and we got like 75 FPS. But we wanted to crank it up a notch, so we went with ultra settings, no upscaling, and we got like around 58 FPS. So we decided to, you know, use FSR because, you know, that's the big thing, but it only gave us like 53, 54 FPS. I think it's because I had the render resolution at 100 and Starfield wants to drop that when you turn on FSR, but, you know. But the coolest thing about the AMD GPU, even the 6000 series cards, is that you get access to frame gen with FSR 3.0. Frame gen was awesome. It was super smooth, way smoother than I expected it to be, and it gave us like 85 FPS on 1440p ultra settings and it looked pretty good on my OLED monitor. Now we did also want to try something, you know, just in raw GPU PC performance, and we tried Cyberpunk 2077. And in Cyberpunk 2077, medium settings, 
no upscaling at 1440p. We got a solid 61 FPS, which I thought was pretty solid. And in a game like Cyberpunk, 60 FPS is perfectly fine. Halo Infinite, we tried it at both 1440p and 1080p just because, you know, it's a different type of game and the settings are not as easily changed. So we tried medium settings at 1440p and we got like 80 to 90 FPS. And at 1080p medium settings, we got like 130 to 140. So this thing kicks tail at 1080p. Next, we tried Warzone on the Resurgence game mode and we tried it at 1440p only because there is a feature with AMD graphics cards that we talked about earlier called Frame Gen that's absolutely awesome. So we tried Warzone first at 1440p on the extreme settings to really try out this Frame Gen thing. And we got like, you know, 100 to 115 FPS occasionally it would drop down to like 90 if you were like close to water or in a really demanding part of the map then we tried fsr 3.0 and it got a little bit better like 120 ish fps at times but the biggest thing was when we turned on frame gen we went up to like 170 to 180 fps on 1440p extreme settings and our millisecond latency here in MSI Afterburner never really went above 10 and I think that's a good sweet spot. I think even it stayed around four or five most of the time, but that was just absolutely awesome. Technology is coming so, so far. And you know, we got to throw one CPU based game in there just for, you know, kicks and giggles. And that was Valorant at 1440p high settings. Valorant got us over like 300 FPS. Might have dropped below that a few times, but you're not going to notice. Run super smooth. Any games that you want to play like that, CSGO, Overwatch, those types of games are going to run flawlessly on this $800 gaming PC, even at 1440p. Then we tried everyone's favorite battle royale. I say that in jest because I know a lot of you don't like it, but there is a huge portion of the world that loves Fortnite. And we tried it at both DX12 and performance mode. On DX12 at 1440p, we still use like competitive settings because like if you're playing Fortnite, you're not playing max settings. You're just, you're just not doing it. On competitive settings, DX12, we got like, you know, 160 to 200 FPS on 1440p. It was okay. It was a little up and down. 1080p was really, really smooth at like 200, 220 FPS. It was pretty good for the most part. But the biggest knock is that you can't play performance mode on an AMD GPU, and that's just not true. I played for two hours on this performance mode. It's the same thing. It's just as smooth as anything else. And I got a 4090 in my main PC. But on performance mode at 1440p, we got a solid 240 FPS. Now, it did drop a little bit, but it's not affecting your performance. Like, I know I can't triple edit, but it's perfectly fine to drop below 240 every now and then. As long as you're not like bottoming out at like 40 or 30 FPS, you're perfectly fine. Then at 1080p though, we got like, we pushed 300. It was like 275, 280 S, but we pushed 300 a lot. So it was really awesome, really fun. Overall at 1440p, this PC is pretty solid and at 1080p, it's absolutely awesome. If you like these step-by-step -step guides, please let me know down in the comments. I'd love to do it again for you if that's what you want and you enjoy this type of content. But if you want something a little shorter and more straight to the point, then you need to go check out this video.